Today, man, we're going to be ranking every WWE Ultimate Edition released in 2024 from worst to best. Now, we usually only do a top 10, but I figured it'd be fun this year if we ran down every single Ultimate Edition released this year and give you my ranking of the worst to the very best in my own personal opinion. Now, before we get started, just because a figure is number one doesn't mean it doesn't have any flaws, and just because a figure comes in at the very bottom of the ranking doesn't mean that it doesn't have anything positive or any good qualities about the figure itself. Another thing I want to be known is this is my list. It's not the right list, it's my list. So if you guys have any arguments, you think I'm crazy, you agree with some points, sound off down in the comment section below. I hope you'll join me in the debate down below. But we're going to get into it, man. And I also know that we have some Ultimate Editions coming later, possibly before the start of the new year, but I figured today was a great day to start off our best or worst of the year for WWE action figures. And so I know Ultimate Edition Series 24 with Finn Balor, Bray Wyatt, Solo Sokoa, those figures and some others may arrive before the end of the year, and I'll just have to bite the L on that. But I figured today was a great day, and I want to run through some criteria before we get into it. So if you're wondering to yourself how I judge these figures, how do I rank these, what goes into this ranking, I take a lot of different things into consideration, but here's the rundown. Number one is excitement level for the figure. How excited does the figure make me when I have it in my hands, when I picked it up, when I unboxed it, maybe leading up to the figure's release. Number two, execution of the details of the figure. Maybe it has a cool fade, or maybe it has some real details on the mask or face paint, or some of the tattoo work or some other details that they could include. This could include a different amount of things, honestly. Number three is likeness to the character that I see on my television. Does it look like a shrunk down version of said character that I see on wrestling television? Does it look like a miniature version of the talent? Number four, feel in hand slash posability. Does it feel good in the hand? Does it feel cheap? Does it feel high quality? Is it posable? Can I move them around? Does it feel like I'm going to snap it in half? And then we have accessories and etc. other style things that could come into consideration, but those are some of the main points. But before we get started, I also want to give some honorable mentions to some of our greatest hits over here. I did want to include these because this figure's amazing. This figure's amazing. This figure's amazing. She's a pretty good figure. That Undertaker's not the greatest, but, you know, he's here. But I didn't think it was fair to take Batista, who I think is one of the better Ultimates they've ever done, and they repaint it, and then he just jumps to number one in the countdown, right? So I just wanted to give a shout-out to some of the great greatest hits. This Hulk Hogan, another really good Hollywood Hulk Hogan Ultimate, but it is a better version of the original one, which would mean that he would move up substantially in the list if you were to do the all-time ultimates, but for the sake of this countdown, I didn't really want to do repaints. I wanted to do real original figures for the most part. And you may see a repaint slightly here and there on this list, but for the most part, I didn't want to include any of these greatest hits. Greatest hits, greatest hits, greatest hits, greatest hits. And this is just a re-release of the exact same Undertaker. So you know what I mean? I just felt like it wasn't right. You can let me know what you think of that. But at the end of the day, it's my countdown. Make your own damn countdown. But let's get into our countdown. Enough talking. Let's shut the hell up and get into it. So coming in at the very bottom of our list at number 36 is going to be Kevin Owens, man. There are so many issues with this figure, man. I really can't even get into it with you, man. First of all, his scale was awful. I think they picked a not, not a really good gear. I think he was very limited. They could have given us multiple shirts. I think his arms are too skinny. The interchangeable head sculpts aren't bad. I don't mind this one. The screaming one's okay, things like that. They did a black shirt underneath, which when you take it off, it just makes it very, very weird without the shirt on there itself. It doesn't even have the PWG logo on it. And really, the worst thing about it is just the scale overall, man. They just This is a big miss, a big miss here for Kevin Owens. And I love Kevin Owens so much. I hate that he's at the bottom, but he's easily the worst ultimate this year for me personally, and you can let me know what you think about that. Coming in at number 35 is going to be Sami Zayn. Now, I don't think this figure is as bad as Kevin Owens, obviously, but I still think that it lacks so much. I really, I think at the end of the day, I just think they picked the wrong gear for these. I think that they should have went with the Survivor Series gear, but even then, I don't know, man. It's just not a well-executed Ultimate Edition. I feel like he's very limited pose-wise. Can't even really do a Haluva kick here, and I think it's just kind of a boring release overall in a lot of ways, and I love Sami Zayn. I love Sami Zayn. I think he's fantastic. I just, I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of fun posing this guy around, and the head sculpts were pretty good. I didn't like the yelling slash celebration head sculpt where the hair was all matted. I think that, it, I don't know, I know what they were going for there. I just, I don't know. It, it, and really, this figure's not really like the worst of all time. It's just hard to explain. I really don't know. I just think the rest of the Ultimates this year were slightly better in some way. And just because he comes this low doesn't 
doesn't mean there's nothing good about the figure. And the next, you know, the 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 figure that's 10 spots ahead of this one could be this much better than this one, but the gaps are so small that it adds up in little increments, and that's just what kind of leads here. So Sami Zayn comes in at second to last for me. Coming in at 34, I went with Coliseum Collection Bret Hart. Didn't like any of these head sculpts. I, I feel like this figure is very, very stiff, and I didn't like the original Elite 43, and it's just a Ultimate Edition version of that. I don't know, man. I'm just not a big fan of it. I, I don't know. I, I didn't like this set overall. The Coliseum Collection, like, I guess it's okay. It's just not a figure that was made for me. Again, very, very stiff in the legs, and for whatever reason, Bret Hart's Ultimates are always very stiff, at least the ones that are pinless, and that's the reason that Bret Hart comes in this low, man. We had a really good year of Ultimates, so it, it, I mean, you're splitting hairs at some points, but for me, Coliseum Collection Brett comes in at number 34. At number 33, this one also pains me because I don't think it's that bad. I just think that he got some of the shish ends of the stick. Coming in at 33, I went with Jim Neidhart, and I think it's a combination of a few different things. I think some of his proportions are a little off. Like, you see how wide he is, and this, this torso isn't the best here for him. I don't know. There's something off about the figure that I can't quite stand. And again, man, it was really tough to pick and choose on these ultimate and it kind of ultimately came down to I think I'd rather have the other figures over this one and I think this quite possibly could be now nah, I don't know the Elite 72 Collector's Edition or whatever that was was pretty good I think and probably the best Nightheart they've made but it really pains me to put him here and again just because this figure's here doesn't mean that it's not good whatsoever I just had to rank these based off of different criteria and the thing that really hurt this guy is feel and hand and posability and I just wasn't that excited for this release overall coming in at 32 is going going to be Gunther. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be upset about this, but I don't really like this Ultimate Edition. We've talked about it. I think it grew on me a little bit, but I just think that the legs look very weird to me. I, I And I know you may say, oh, that, that looks like Gunther's legs. I don't know, man. I, I don't like it. I don't really care for the gear. I don't like the build of the figure. I just don't really like it. I, I don't know what it is. I'd much prefer the Elite for whatever reason. I know that a lot of people don't believe in that and they think it's, you know, it's the craziest thing ever, but that's how I feel about it, man. And again, this is a really good year of Ultimates. There are so many good Ultimates and some of these pay me to put this low, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles this year, man tough. And I don't really have to make these decisions if we do a traditional top 10, but we're ranking them all. So that's just kind of what comes with it. But number 31 is John Cena. You may be upset about this. You may think, what the hell are you talking about, Brad? But you take this shirt off, man. I hate this torso. It looks very ugly. I like some things about the figure. I think the shirt's a little small. I think that I like the attention to detail on the belt. I like the towel that the figure comes with, how you can tuck it in the back and the one that he can hold is great. But the shoe mold that they used here, there's no ankle cut. You only get shin cut and he never wore high top sneakers with this look. The torso is just hideous, and I just, I don't know, man. I don't really care for it that much. I love Cena, as you guys know, but I think there are much better ultimates, unfortunately, this year, and so he doesn't make the cut here in, as part of the top 10, obviously. Moving on to number 30, I went with the fan takeover Rey Mysterio. Now, I thought this figure originally would come in much lower, but I can't really dock it because it's still a pretty good figure. I like the t-shirt it comes with. I think the mask putting on head sculpt's pretty cool. It's like a cool gimmick they went with there. I still don't think this guy should have won the vote for the fan takeover, but at the end of the day, very poseable, feels immaculate in hand. It is technically a Spider-Man gear, even if they didn't give you any details of the Spider-Man gear. No webs or anything. The gear's not even accurate, but you know what? It's kind of an ultimate equivalent of the Royal Rumble Elite, and you know what? I guess that's good enough to, to jump a few spots here in the Ultimate Edition countdown. But moving up to 29, I went with Bret Hart from the Monday Night War series. The head sculpts on this guy were dreadful. Dreadful head sculpts on here. I think everything from the neck down is pretty good, but again, very, very tight. I do like the gear. I like the leather jacket and things like that, but I don't know, man. The head sculpts were so damn bad, he couldn't be any higher. The head sculpts on this figure were just dreadful, and so he could not possibly get any higher than he was here at 29. At 28, some people may already be complaining, man, but I don't know, man. I'm just not the biggest fan. We have Jay Uso. We have Jay Uso here. It's not a bad figure, man. I like that it has all the tattoos. I think that it's a pretty good representation of him. You guys just know, this John Cena shoe mold, this Ultimate Edition shoe mold, combined with these legs is a nightmare, man. It's just a nightmare. He doesn't stand well. Very stiff legs. We've talked about it with the Elite 106 Usos and some other Usos. I like the head sculpts. The gear solid, all those different things, but there are a lot of things that hold this figure back, and that's just the way it is. I think that the upcoming ultimate of him will be much better than this, and I kind of low key feels like kind of a wasted spot just because they had they could have waited and plugged somebody else in there and then done a Yeet or main event Uso, but I got it's a fair Uso. It's just 
I'd rather have the other figures on the list. I think another added part of the criteria has to be figures in front of it are usually because I'd rather have that figure more than the one that was previous. Next up, we have Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I don't hate this figure. I think he's very poseable. My legs are pretty loose, though. It's very, very loose, and he just looks so small on the bottom half. But I don't know. It's not the most exciting figure. I still like it, but he has really loose legs. Really loose legs. He looks pretty tiny down there. He kind of looks, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but I don't hate the figure. I think it's solid. It's got some good additions. I like the gi and stuff, but that's where Ricky the Dragon lands this year. At 26, we have Dominic Mysterio. Now, he didn't have the mustache head sculpt. He came with the interchangeable jacket and stuff, and I think this flannel didn't even come with it, but this figure I like a lot more than I thought I would. He poses around pretty well, and there's some cool things about it. I just didn't think that he would get much higher than this. I think that they're, uh, you know, it's a fair ultimate, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fair. It's a fair release. It's just not one of the best ones of the year. Similar to number 25, I went with L.A. Knight. Now, L.A. Knight, I like everything from the neck down besides the thighs. You guys know he has the Jordan 11 boots, which I wanted for a long time. I, I don't like the head sculpts. Head sculpts are dreadful. Love the torso. Love the formula till the thighs. The thighs kind of ruin it. I wish they'd switch out the thighs. I like the gear and everything, and I love the boots. It's a fair release, but it, it didn't knock out all the details that it could have, and that's why he comes in at number 25. At 24, we have the Yokozuna Chase. Now, I don't have that one unboxed. I have it mint on card, but I didn't want to put it there. But that tells you that number 23 is going to be the regular edition of the Yokozuna. I think that the Yokozuna regular version is slightly better. I like the gear better. I think I like the black tie better than the white tie. But this is a very cool release. You know, is he somebody I would have considered for the Ultimate Edition line? Not, not right off the cuff. But I think that it's a good execution of him. And I like the Yokozuna figure. Even if it's not one of my favorites of the year, it's still a fair release. I think it deserves its flowers here. Number 22 is Mankind. Mankind's solid. I, for one, like the tie and the shirt and the undershirt there. I think that was a cool thing. I like the accessories, the head sculpts, the removable mask. I think that he's a little limited on his torso, but I think he poses around pretty fair. You get the Mr. Sacco. It's a fun release. I think that it is considerable, and I definitely like it better than the rest of these Ultimates here. Number 21 is going to be Scott Hall. Kind of a repaint, you know, kind of a repaint, I will say. It's definitely, it could be considered a repaint, but I think that it is a Scott Hall. It's great gear. It's an Ultimate we waited on for a while, and I think up next to Kevin Nash, he is a fair release. It's a fair Ultimate. I think it's fine. If you have it higher, I understand. And I think that it's a solid, executable, Ultimate Edition Scott Hall figure. We're into the top 20. We're getting into the top 20 now. I had to start splitting some hairs, but it's what we had to do, man. Coming in at number 20, Ultimate Edition Mattel Creations Eric Bischoff. If this guy was more poseable and not as stiff in the legs, man, I would have him higher. I also think this head sculpt kind of looks like, is it Pierce Brosman or something like that? Looks like he's about to go freaking jump off a dam or something. And he, he, you know, it's a good, young Eric Bischoff figure. I like the figure a lot. I like Eric Bischoff. Love Eric Bischoff. But I think that some of the details could have been executed better. I wish he was more poseable and felt better in hand. Wasn't as stiff. And I think he could have climbed up a few more spots. But he finds himself at number 20 this year. Christ. At number 19, we have the Rey, Med Rey Mysterio, almost said. Rey Mysterio from WrestleMania 39. Pretty cool gear. I know it has the Bible Man mask, but I like the gear overall. I figured we'd get this in figure form, and I like it. I think that it is a solid Ultimate Edition. He poses around nice and everything like that. I like the colors and everything. Pretty cool. Pretty cool figure overall. I like it. Number 18 is Monday Night Wars Eddie Guerrero. Very fair figure. One that I didn't get to reveal on the channel, but I love the gear. I love the head sculpts. Great skin tone. Really good accessory. This is a fair ultimate. If you have this in the top 10, I would understand it completely. It's a very, very good figure, but it was not good enough to get higher for me personally. But he is very poseable and stuff like that. This is a very good ultimate, in my opinion. Coming in at 17, we have the Amazon exclusive Grudge Match Ultimate Warrior. A very, very not talked about ultimate. And I didn't get to review this set on the channel, but holy mess, what a great ultimate, man. The colors here, the new boot sculpt he's got going on right here. Honestly, guys should probably be higher. I mean, he is very damn good. One of the better, probably my favorite Ultimate Edition Ultimate Warrior that they've done. Very, very good, man. Not to mention this damn good jacket he gets right here with the Ultimate Warrior on the back. This jacket is insane. This set is insane. It, I mean, it's just an immaculate set. This guy and Papa Shango, this Ultimate Warrior is the real deal, man. He could probably jump a few more spots, so we put him there. He, that's one of the more underrated ones in the whole freaking video. Number 16, I went with Kevin Nash. Big man Kevin Nash right here. Hold up. 
up. Very damn good, Kevin Nash. Very poseable. Good representation of the character right here. Great fill in hand. Good posability. Potentially the best Kevin Nash figure ever made, I'd say. I like the elbow pad, too. Number 15, I went with the Monday Night Wars Roddy Piper, man. I love this figure. It reminds me of Toy Biz Roddy. That's what I call this figure. It just really throws me back, and I think it's a good execution of older man Roddy here. Like the gear, love the kill, the reality check shirt, the interchangeable leather jacket. Really good execution of a figure that, you know, may not be, you know, the, the, the shiftiest or the prettiest figure of all time when it comes to Flash and stuff, but man, that's a good figure right there. Number 14, I went with Roman Reigns. I really do love this Ultimate. I did put a custom shirt on there, but I really like the new torso. I think the boots were good. It's a really good Ultimate of a great character. Really good representation of Roman. If he wasn't short, he's a little short, I'd say, and if he wasn't as short, he'd probably be higher. I know it's not the most exciting release, but damn, man. You gotta give it to the Tribal Chief right here. Really good representation of Roman. Coming in at 13, we have the fan takeover, Seth freaking Rollins in the orange gear. Took a long time to get this figure, and I think it'd probably be higher, but it is kind of a one-off gear, but it's good execution. He doesn't have his tattoo on the back. It's a repeat head sculpts and stuff, but still a fun figure. It's very, just, uh, very loud. Very loud figure with the helmet and the wings and the shirt the orange gear. It's a good figure, obviously. It's very good, but I have him here at the number 13 spot, just outside the top 10 for me. I'm gonna have to move this guy back, man. These damn wings are about to, ta about to take flight on us or something. Coming in at number 12, I went with the Vader Ultimate Edition Legends Chase figure. So I have him here. Really good figure. Really good posability. Great head sculpts. Just a, a great... Everything you want out of an Ultimate, man, this Vader checks all those boxes. He does all the things you want him to do. He's big He's mean. He's a beast. I have Vader coming in at number 12. And then at 11, I think it's 11. Yeah, at 11, we have the regular edition. I think that the regular edition was a little bit better. I just like it better for whatever reason. I like the gear better. I like, the, you know, everything going on here. They, they did a great job here on Vader. Really good ultimate. One of the more underrated ultimates of the year. But now we must get into the top 10. The top 10 WWE ultimates of 2024 for me personally, man. Starting out at number 10, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. WrestleMania 12 Shawn Michaels. I know a lot of people don't really like this figure, man, and I really don't understand that. I think that the gear's unique. You know, I, I kind of am on the fence when it comes to the kind of, you know, the, the tablecloth style pants with the molded shirt with the sculpted arms. Like, I get that, but... I think overall, I mean, it's a repaint of one of the better Ultimates, the Fan Takeover Sean, and I think that's a good thing. I think, you know, it's one of the bigger moments and everything. I know it doesn't come with a championship, but I really like the zip line and everything like that. I like the figure. I think it was great. Really fun Ultimate right there. Coming in at number nine, not the most exciting, but I think it's damn good execution. Damn good execution. Triple H from the Monday Night Wars line. Love the unique torso. Love the game over shirt. Love the sweatpants. I think it was a damn good Ultimate. This is what I like out of Ultimates. The Attention to detail on the torso, giving us this new sculpted torso, really executing that well. Much better than his first go around or second go around. Really, really nice. Really nice Triple H. I love it. I think this is a great figure. I hope to pick up more. I think the head sculpts were good and everything like that. A gear been waiting on. It's a nice one. I think that, you know, it doesn't have to be the flashiest figure or anything like that, man. It's representation of a character and really executing that to a high level. Speaking of which, getting into number eight, I went with Scott Steiner from the Steiner Brothers 2-Pack. This is a phenomenal figure. I love the gear. I think the head sculpts are nice. The Letterman jacket is great. Really damn good. And then at number seven, I did go with Rick Steiner. I think these are two of the better ultimates of the year, man. Just so, so well executed. Great attention to detail. The jackets are great. The gear is great. I love the attention to detail on the boots. Just phenomenal figures. I love their formulas. They just did a really outstanding job on these two guys. They, they did a really great job. Ringside Collectibles and Mattel coming together for that project. They knocked it out of the park with Rick and Scott Steiner this year year. We're getting into the top six now, man. Top six Ultimates of the Year. At number six, I went with Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. What is not to be said about this figure, man? I mean, look at him. He gets a full cloth goods suit. You get the glitter tie, the glitter on the money symbols here. The whole jacket shimmers. It looks so good. The, he the head sculpts are great. He comes with the money. You get a two-in-one figure, pretty much. Wrestling gear underneath. You got business over the top. It's just a really good execution of Million Dollar Man. I think it's the best Million Dollar Man that 
they've ever done. And I really enjoy this figure. I have, I just always, when I see this figure on the shelf, I look at it. You know what I mean? It's even got the stripes on the pants. Just a lot of really good executed details on that guy. And I don't know how you leave him out of your top ultimates of the year. It's a great ultimate edition, Ted DiBiase. Moving into our top five, man. Number five is a figure I didn't even get to review on the channel, but I wish that I did. But I did get this set in just in time for this video and didn't have time to review it, but I'm so glad that we have this. It is going to be Papa Shango from the Grudge Match Ultimate Edition 2-pack with Ultimate Warrior. Holy smokes, what a great figure. The tattoo detail, the necklace, the skeleton, the face paint, the hat, this cape that has this like platinum reflective material going on with the different tassels and stuff on it. It is such a high quality Ultimate Edition. I think they did a standout job on this Papa Shango. I really, really enjoy it, and I think that it is one of the better Ultimates. I mean, you got face paint, a cape, some cool accessories. It's gonna be hard to leave that guy off, man. Just a great toyetic figure. Oh man, we may have the hottest take of the hottest take right here at number four. I went with the ringside exclusive Money in the Bank CM Punk, man. You know, I as good as this figure is, it's so good. I love the head sculpt. I love the gear, obviously. This is a fantasy booked project for myself, but I think the oversized shirt, I think that the interchangeable head sculpts were not the best executed. I think the yelling head sculpt looked very weird to me. I think the blowing kiss face was solid, but it wasn't, it didn't nail the likeness. However, this stock head sculpt on there looks amazing. It's a moment in time figure. It's going to be considered as one of the better ultimates of the year by a lot of people. It's going to be regarded by mo by a lot of people as the best ultimate or one of the top ultimates. And I understand it, man, but for me, it does come in at number four. Coming in at number three is a figure I love so much. I think it's such a good execution of the character. It's going to be the Legends Target exclusive Undertaker. This figure is so damn good, man. I mean, just look how menacing he looks with the hat and the jacket. You have a great size torso. I really love the torso execution here with these new sculpted gloves and how big the torso is to the shoulders with the striations and the arms. It's just such a great Undertaker. This is just so good. So good. I love it so much. Every time I see it, I'm like, damn, it just takes me back. It's such a good ultimate. I love this Ultimate Edition Undertaker. Definitely one of my favorite ultimates this year, if not ever. It's so good, man. It's so, so good. It would be up there with some of the better ultimates. And honestly, it was hard not to keep him in the top two because I think that he is that good, which takes us into the number two ultimate of the year, which arguably could be number one. I think the top three, I could interchange on any given day depending on my mood. But number two is going to be Asuka. This figure is unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. The mask and how it just pops right on there is so good. Details in the mask executed well. It applies easily. All the detail in the face paint right here. Great detail in the face paint, the hair, all the intricate detail here. I love the execution of the butterfly joints. The robe, man. The damn robe right here. Probably the best cloth goods possibly that Mattel's ever done. It's just unreal how poseable. The gear, the zebra print, the blue and pink, the zebra print. The just everything about this figure is an absolute beast. I really, I really, it should probably be number one to be honest. It is that good. It's the best women's figure that Mattel's ever done and it's that good. It is that good. You need to own this figure. You need to own this figure, but for me, personally, for my number one Ultimate Edition of the year, maybe I'm biased, but I did go with Cody Rhodes. I really like this figure, man. I think that it's such a great formula from head to toe. I really like the yelling head sculpt, even if it is a reissued head sculpt and everything like that, and while the base head sculpt isn't my favorite of all time, I just think that it looks so premium. I love the jacket sculpt and everything like that, and I know that it's black and it should be navy. It's missing the wing on the back. There are things missing about the figure. I'm not even saying that there's not. But at the end of the day, out of all these figures, I think I would rather have this figure over the rest. And I know that's crazy, but I'm a Kobe, I'm a Cody crybaby. I like the figure a lot. I think the white looks immaculate. Uh, really good gear. The gear reminds me of George Washington a lot, and even the coat and everything like that. The boots look phenomenal. Great boot sculpt. Great gear. And for me personally, this is my number one ultimate of the year. One of my favorite like Mattel WWE figures ever, I think, is this Cody. And there are things holding it back. I'm not saying there's not, but I think that I, I just really enjoy the figure, man. I think it's so good. So at the end of the day, all of these ultimates are very high quality. 
I think that the top 10 Ultimates here, you can't go wrong with any of them. There's probably some, uh, some on the outside looking in that could probably go in there. But man, what a great year of Ultimate Editions. There's so many quality figures here. And again, we may get Finn. We may get Solo Sokoa. We may get Bray Wyatt before the end of the year. It won't shock me if they come in before New Year's. It won't shock me. I mean, we have pretty much half a month until they come in or, you know, that they have to come in. But I wanted to get this video out. I couldn't take it any longer. And in that video, when we review those figures, if they make it before the end of the year, I'll chime in and tell you where they would have stuck in this countdown. I'll, I'll chime in and say, hey, this would have been here. This would have been there. Because I think some of those guys would have been higher up. Who knows where they would have went. I'm really looking forward to the figures, though, and I can't wait to review those. But I think that's all the ultimates, really, that we're going to get. And also, Dusty Rhodes could hit, I guess, the Target Exclusive Legends figure could hit before the end of the year as well. But that all remains to be seen, man. We'll see. But that is every Ultimate Edition release in 2024, ranked from worst to best to me personally. I'd love to know your sound off in the comment section, man. Let me know where I missed. Let me know where I hit. Maybe you agree, disagree. Let me know all your things down below. And again, man, this top three, top four, top five, they could shift here and there. Honestly, Ted DiBiase, I may put him over Papa Shango. There's some different here or there things. I think these top three, though, these are my favorite three Ultimates by a bar none. These are my favorite three Ultimates. I think the rest of them are great, obviously. And, you know, some are stinkers. Like, Kevin Owens is not very good. There's some figures back there that aren't great, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, it was a great year of Ultimates, and I can't wait for next year. I think it's going to be great. We're going to do our top elites of the year and all those things. Worst figures of the year, all that. We'll get into it. But this was our... Every WWE Ultimate Edition ranked from worst to best in the year 2024, of course. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate you fellas. Thank you guys so very much for your support. You guys are great. I appreciate all of you so very much, man. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to me. But I'm getting the hell out. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on all this stuff down below, man. Sound off, debate, let me know. But I'm getting out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>